Okay, call the meeting to order, please. Can I have a uh, mover and seconder to call the meeting? Councilor Cabral, Councilor Ritchie. That the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Springwater of December 18, 2019, come to order at 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? Carried. Can I ask you to Thank you. Council, uh, are there any uh, pecuniary interests that need to be disclosed tonight? All right, should any arise, please let me know. So thank you folks for coming out in this uh, snowy weather tonight. Um, glad you got here safely and please make sure you get home safely. <clears throat> so we're starting at 4.1 with a presentation by Mr. Carl Wright on the Monarch Ultra, which you're gonna find fascinating. Mr. Carl Wright is our patrol crossing guard as well uh, at Hillsdale. And he's joined by his wife, uh, <coughs> Lynn Wright, who was the previous crossing guard, and uh, they both are residents of, of uh, Hillsdale. So we welcome you. And uh, you're, you're going to have to sit here, please, Carl, yes, okay. and, pu and pull the microphone close because we are streaming it. And everybody okay. wants to hear you, so you okay, need to speak into the mic, okay? Yeah, thank you. And then you've got the ability to control the, yeah. the over. So the, thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Mayor Don. The Monarch Ultra, what it is, it's a 4,360 kilometer a relay run from Canada to Mexico that follows the migratory path of the Monarch Ultra. And I got involved with it as an ambassador, as a runner, and as a writer. And it's a very, very exciting uh, uh, Thing. And so what it is, it's, it's an environmental thing with our monarchs, as you know, they have been really dropping in numbers over the past uh, many, many years, 80% uh, of National Geographic in the 20 years, uh, different reasons, climate change, habitat loss, pesticide, disease. Um, the graph, you can see uh, the highest uh, is way, way up there, the lowest um, was is by hectares and 0.67 of hectare in Mexico is where they uh, uh, overwinter there and they realize in the arrow at the right it's at now sustainable levels they have been slowly increasing which is exciting stuff there uh, save the monarchs one thing we can do is by planting milkweed this here is the tropical milkweed you find in uh, Texas and Mexico uh, very very beautiful uh, plant there. Uh, the team, Carlotta James, the one that came up with the, uh, the dream. Clay Williams is the, uh, the run director and he, the mapping expert. And it's going to be a documentary film as well. So hang on for next year, maybe. Uh, documentary film, it's been filmed. So the 40 end up being 4,300 kilometers, three countries. Uh, Carlotta, and it started off in Peterborough, where she's from. And she did one stage, and then the next stage is the next day. Uh, Clay would take over, and it goes on and on for 47 days, which is the approximately time the monarchs arrive in Mexico. And so I did day four, uh, just north of London there. And I was, and Carlotta asked me, uh, would I, uh, during this run, would I be able to go down to Mexico? Because they didn't have enough registered runners down there. And I was just getting over an injury, and I said, oh, I don't know. We'll see how I uh, make out with this run there. And ended up, uh, I felt good. And I said, uh, yeah, I'll go down. And I had to ask, I went right to the top, asked Don, can I have uh, some time off to go down to Mexico? And 
and the council. I went through the council and, and Jeff there and give me your blessing. So thank you very, very much. An incredible experience. Uh, I'm going to fly through these uh, slides in a hurry here. Uh, I saved the monarchs by running in their shoes. We have an idea. Uh, there's the map, uh, 4,300 kilometers. That was all mapped up. Uh, Clay did the files. He had uh, 988 sheets. It actually went through three countries, two border crossings, uh, talking about provinces and states, 14 states, one province, uh, 130, 113 sorry, uh, municipalities like Springwater. Uh, amazing, amazing project to put that together. I took the Greyhound down. It was cheaper to take a, a flight, <laughs> but I wanted to see what these monarchs would be facing, and I'm big on carbon footprints, so I took that bus down. It ended up being a 48-hour uh, trip, but it ended up with a few delays um, and a tornado in, in Dallas. I didn't meet my team at uh, McAllen, Texas, just north of the border. It's telling uh, how petrified I was from Reynosa, Texas. Uh, a very, very, a lot of drug cartels, very, very dangerous with murders and kidnappings, and I was petrified, but the reception in Reynosa was just amazing. There's Carlotta, the runner there. Uh, kids were all over the streets there. Um, we had receptions with the uh, Rotary Club that night, and it ended up uh, 55 hours in the bus, and they kept on going through the night, and I got home at my billet place in those 62 hours of the time I put my head on the pillow. I was a little tired, so. And, uh, and so uh, lots of police escorts. We had, um, uh, we had uh, 14 days in Mexico. We had coverage for 11 days. They looked after us really, really well. The three days, I, we went um, to Monterey because we didn't have a police escort. Six uh, million people, I'm a little fresh there before my run. Uh, during the same time, while we're running, Carlotta and the gang would be speaking. In total, we actually uh, had 70 media interviews. We had 60 sponsors. We had 25 receptions uh, across Canada and, and Mexico and the States, 15 presentations to uh, conservation groups, 10 school presentations, and it went on and on. So we're, we're not only running, we're very, very busy there. Uh, there is I'm a little bit more tuckered after my run there. Uh, Mexico it was very diverse. Uh, desert was amazing. It was like 36 degrees there, and I was pretty well wiped, uh, but I finished. <laughs> so you feel a lot, a lot better when you're done there. So, uh, and then they ended up. I came home f uh, five days before because they did have registered runners, and they ended up in Mexico um, at the sanctuaries. 47 days, 4,366 kilometers. Uh, uh, such a privilege to be part of it, and they'll be back in 2021, and there'll be a film uh, coming out in 2020 uh, about the whole project there. So I'll whip through it pretty quickly. <laughs> That's, uh, thank you for your time and for listening there. Absolutely incredible. Thank you very much for coming and telling us about it. So I'll open it up for council to uh, have comment or questions. How many kilometers did you end up running uh, yourself? Uh, actually, myself, uh, only about 200 there. Only about two hundred. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, uh, they had an extra uh, Canadian runner went down to uh, to run as well. There, yeah. Councillor Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I think that's absolutely fantastic, and that would be absolutely beautiful down there. It's, it looks so pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mexico is absolutely. I love. I was so petrified. I love. Absolutely love Mexico. It's such a beautiful people. People are so. You hear all these stories, but the people are so, so beautiful people there. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Th thanks. Well, on behalf of uh, Council, thank you very much. We'd like to present you with a, with a script, and congratulations you. on, on your, your, uh, your concern for the butterfly and your commitment to run in this. So uh, let me present it to you, and can we get a picture, please, with Council? Yeah.
Okay, can I have a mover and a seconder for, to receive that delegation? Uh, Councillor Cabral, Councillor Chapman, <coughs> that the delegation from Carl Wright be received. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you again. Next, we um, have a delegation from the Elmville District Food Bank, an update on all the good things that are happening there. And uh, thank you for the, the supporters coming out to support it. And we look forward to getting the update from uh, Mr. Ron Belcourt. Welcome back, Ron. <laughs> Don't have to tell you about the drill to project your voice. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, members of council. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Elmville and District Food Bank uh, Board of Directors. As you're aware, we started a process uh, approximately a year ago uh, with a uh, with the meeting, uh, initial meeting with the food bank members, a uh, meeting with members of council and township staff. Um, the purpose of the meeting was to highlight the, the difficulties they were facing uh, with the space at the Elmville Community Hall. Um, and as we're all aware, most of the storage of the food and that is up the stairs. And I believe in their presentation <coughs> on February the 20th, they highlighted that they handle the food approximately 14 to 15 times before a client even receives it, and that's moving it up and down the stairs, <coughs> loading it, unloading it, and sometimes having to bring it back um, <coughs> if it gets uh, out of date. Uh, so we looked, there were three possible solutions that were looked at. Uh, one was the installation of a freight elevator in the northeast corner of the community center. Uh, one was to construct an, an addition to the south end of the facility uh, which was not deemed viable because of a limited amount of space uh, due to property setbacks etc and the third option was to build a new ground level facility that could serve the needs of today and tomorrow um, which is what the preferred option was uh, after the uh, review of it <clears throat> at the uh, february 20th meeting you'll recall there was a staff report that uh, followed the uh, deputation from the food bank uh, directors uh, with the following resolution being supported by council and that construction of a new facility be granted at 62 Young Street in Elmville and with the township making a one-time capital contribution of 100,000 and that along with 100,000 from the Elmville District Food Bank which they have uh, to support the project up front and that any funds over the 200,000 would be front ended by the municipality with the food bank repaying it over the next uh, 10 years. <coughs> uh, since that date, uh, there's been a number of activities that have been undertaken uh, by both uh, the food bank and by township staff. Uh, that being the conceptual design of, of the new facility. Uh, the members worked in conjunction with the Elmville Home Building Center design team, uh, which they provided their services at no charge to the committee. Uh, the conceptual plans have been vetted by the Springwater Joint Accessibility Committee. Um, further so soil investigations were completed on the site by Peter McCallum, uh, and it was determined that the site is suitable for the structure. Uh, further site investigations were also conducted because of it being the the former uh, site where the Elmville pump house, the original 1929 pump house was, uh, there's still one small um, active artesian flow which is drained off to the, to the north and then to the west into the catch uh, storm system. <clears throat> there was a number of trees that needed to be removed along the north uh, fence line and also between uh, Young Street and the fence line. Um, Hydro One was uh, contacted and they were able to remove the extremely large ash trees along the street uh, and a contractor was uh, required to remove those within into inside the property line 
plus one that was right on the corner of the property line and the neighbor to the north. <coughs> um, township staff issued an RFP for the design build on August 22nd with the closing date of the September 26th. Um, the documents were picked up by numerous uh, contractors and subcontractors through the bids and tender website. Um, during the bidding period, there was only a couple of questions, uh, both those related to the <coughs> suggested uh, construction cost and that it should be double that and then some. Uh, so at the time of the closing, no bids were received. Uh, following that, uh, a discussion was held with CAO Schmidt and Ryan Anderson as to how we should uh, move forward and it was determined that we go to the market, acquire three bids from local contractors based on the, st on the same requirements that were contained in the RFP, uh, less the bonding, which was the performance and the materials and materials bonds. <coughs> uh, so we reached out to Pro Plan Buildings, Mercot Design Build, Double M Construction, and Holt Custom Homes. Uh, Pro Plan did not respond to the request. Um, they were one of the contractors that assisted us initially in establishing kind of the, the building cost. Uh, so three uh, quotes were received and uh, three interviews with the proponents were held on this Saturday, November the 30th. Um, all three proponents proposed to use local subcontractors who are willing to contribute towards the project. Uh, two of the three proponents uh, proposed a turnkey solution, uh, whereas one, uh, there were still a number of items that were left not included in their, in their cost submission. Um, upon review of the, th of the three proposals, the committee felt <coughs> the best proposal was that from the lowest bid, and that was from Mercot Design Build. <coughs> Now to the nitty gritty. So the uh, proposed, uh, the cost is 460,000 plus HST. Uh, would include all the site preparation, including the paving of entrances, uh, the paving at the front end of the building, gravel parking area down the south, <coughs> re relocating any of the drainage lines that are, that would affect uh, where the building is being laid out. Uh, so there are several and also the construction of a drainage swale along the north side of the property because to prevent any, any water from leaving the site and affecting the neighboring property to the north. Um, there's, a bit of an, there's quite an elevation difference there and that is one of the things that we would have to, have to do to ensure the property to the north is not affected. Uh, <coughs> Again, with the property to the north, there's a 45 minute fire code separation required in that wall, uh, which they've taken into account. Um, all the lighting is to be LED, high, high efficiency heating and cooling units, and the facility will meet all the AODA requirements. Uh, exteriors be uh, maintenance free, pre finished metal roofing and siding, <coughs> and Mercot will be coordinating all the utility connections. Uh, with the appropriate agencies. <clears throat> Upon execution of the contract, uh, Mercot will engage his engineer to commence work on preparing the final floor plan, um, as there will be a couple of minor changes to the conceptual plan uh, that will, uh, will not cost anymore and provide us with uh, some of the things that a larger uh, janitorial room and increasing the uh, the warehousing uh, storage space. Uh, then they will commence, once that's finalized, the detailed drawings for building permit will be completed. Um, again, they'll be applying for the permit, hopefully through um, mid-February, uh, with the intent, if the weather cooperates, uh, to be on site mid-March, with construction starting, hopefully, the end of March, 1st of April. Their proposed construction period is two to three months. <clears throat> and they are committed to being on site from start to finish and not moving from one job to another. <clears throat> from a financial perspective, 
the total project costs, including the not recoverable taxes, uh, would be 478,272, and that includes the 10,000 approximately that has been incurred to date on the project. Uh, as with the resolution last uh, February, uh, Council is committed to a one time con capital contribution of 100,000. A food bank has 100,000 to commit up front. Uh, with 278, 272 to be financed uh, or front ended for the project. Uh, as per the resolution, the f they have approved the front ending uh, for anything over the cost of 200,000 from the Elmville Hydro Reserve Fund with the food bank to repay in annual installments within 10 years. And upon approval of the construction contract, the, the food bank will commence with its fundraising campaign, and will forward their initial commitment of 100,000 upon request of the township. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. <clears throat> we'll open it up to uh, questions or discussion. Um, I've got a question. So if there is uh, amounts, or when there are amounts raised through fundraising, um, will those lump sum amounts <coughs> be paid down to pay down the loan uh, to accelerate the pay down of the of the loan. That is a question I would have to res get the food bank to respond to. Um, the intent is everything would be paid at the 100% rate and then contractors could in turn make a donation and get a, uh, a tax receipt from the food bank who has terrible tax uh, uh, number um, would have to yes th that that was that was yeah. that's certainly one element with yeah. respect to the with the uh, tax donation of the work but i was i was i was referring to the, if the 278 272 that's going to have fundraising over the next 10 years yeah. i believe it is their intention to pay down if they have more than the annual installment they would pay down as quickly as possible okay thank you <coughs> councillor moore Thank you, Mayor Allen. Nice to see you, Ron. Look what rested. Thank you. <laughs> um, so if I do my math right, the payback is about $28,000 a year. Is that a reasonable amount to accept the food bank to be able to pay back? I'm not sure how long it took them to raise the $100,000, but I'm just wondering if, if, if this is a possibility or not. Ron? Um, yes, they're quite confident that they can. The community has been very supportive in the fact of providing money. There are numerous agencies and groups that have already said they will commit to the project. Um, in, in understanding the donations that they get on an annual basis, that's how they've accumulated over 100000 They have to have so much in re reserve as per, per their uh, bylaws. But they do have a hundred thousand, which has been accumulated over a few years, and with an aggressive campaign, which they are planning, um, they've been kind of sitting back now, wait, working on their Christmas holiday hampers and getting that out of the way first. And if we can get confirmation that we're going ahead with the contract and the set amount, then they will hit the ground running and. It's their intent to pay it off as fast as possible, and they feel confident that they can do it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Thank you. How does it feel to be sitting on the other side? More, more relaxing. More relaxing. <laughs> I welcome the crowd to come. We've been waiting for this report for a while, and we know we hear, uh, we hear the difficulties they have. I've supported this all along. I'm sure we'll be able to find... Uh, be able to move forward with this. This reminds me, Mayor Allen, in our second term when the curling club came before us wanting money for their ice ice making machine and uh, their old machine was pushed and they needed a new one. Uh, their season was hanging in the balance. We reached out, we lent them the money, they got up and running and I believe they might be, have this already paid back. You might be able to answer that for me. Mm. Extractor. Uh, I believe they're down to one more payment. One more payment and they're done. Two so at I, the very most. Yeah, so I, I have confidence very much so. And I know just from working in the village and in the community that there's a lot of people that really 
really work with, with the food bank there to uh, make sure this thing is a success and they're looking to us. And I support this 100% and I hope the rest of you do. Thanks. Thank you. Council, Councillor Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. I guess my question is for our Director of Finance, or CAO Schmidt. Is there sufficient funds in the Elmville Food Bank to meet this requirement? CAO Schmidt. Sorry, I meant the Hydro Fund. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Councillor Hanna. So currently, there's approximately $432,000 in the Elmville Hydro Reserve Fund. So yes, there is uh, funds available to move forward with this. Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor. I'll just echo your comments as well as uh, Councillor Ritchie's. And I also wanted to thank uh, Ron Belcourt here because uh, as uh, Director of uh, Recreation, Parks and Property, uh, he kind of took the lead there as a director. And I, I just want to thank him for continuing once he did retire because it would have been something he could have backed out of and he didn't. So I do appreciate that, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I have a mover and seconder uh, that the delegation from the Elval District Food Bank be received and that the matter be referred back to staff for further reporting regarding the building quotes received. Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ritchie, all those in favour? Carry. thank you. Thank you again, Ron, and I got a message from Deb McLean saying that Christmas hampers for 61 local families will go out to, uh, Friday morning, December 20th. And uh, we're invited, all members of council, to drop by the hall either tomorrow or Friday morning to see the process involved. It certainly has been a busy week, and it is overwhelming to see the support from all aspects of the township. So thank you for attending, and thanks for the ongoing fantastic work that you do at the food bank. Merry Christmas. Next, we're moving on to question period. If any member of the public uh, has a question, uh, please come forward. And uh, you have up to two minutes to pose your question with respect to an item on the agenda tonight. Yes, come forward, please. Please state your name and address. Good evening, Mayor and Council. David Strawn from 47 Finlay Mill Road in, in Midhurst. And my comment tonight basically is in the form of a request. Uh, as you know that we had the uh, official plan review um, two weeks ago today and uh, the members of the public were invited to comment and uh, I did, probably you can remember that. Um, I just wanted to make a, a small request uh, regarding the minutes because there were some comments made that I thought were important which ended up not being in the mi minutes. I uh, appreciate the need for making a summary of what speakers say but I didn't speak for very long and there were some points that I'd like to have included. I've written them out. Uh, I could read it to you very quickly if you wanted. Uh, All right. Uh, take less go than ahead, a minute. Please. <laughs> uh, it includes it includes one sentence that was actually <laughs> already in the minutes, but the whole thing reads: um, Mr. Strawn said the official plan review is based on a misleading supposition that Springwater residents actually want the population of Springwater to double in 12 years, as implied on the on the display boards. He suggested that Springwater traffic would double, that Midhurst traffic would increase by nine times, and that Springwater taxes would increase to match those in Barry. He questioned, is this what residents really want? Mr. Strawn also advised that future developments on prime agricultural lands will harm the agricultural industry within Springwater. I'm hoping that you'll recall that's what I actually said. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll, certainly, we'll certainly review the tapes, and uh, so you have... Um, I have, uh, yes, I've got right here okay. the copies of that, All right. which I'm happy to distribute. Please provide that to the clerk and uh, uh, we'll review the tapes um, again. It's, o it's okay. Uh, go ahead, just give it to the clerk if you would, please. And, and yeah. Okay. We will check it out. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hello. Mrs. Geist from uh, Hillsdale. I just wanted to have a quick. Yeah, sorry. Uh, can you can you repeat that in the mic in your address, please? Sure. Mrs. Geist from Robert Boulevard in Hillsdale. Yes. I just wanted to have a quick uh, follow up for the um, email that I sent in today about the uh, changes to the ORV use in the township. Um, there's been a little bit of mention of Oramondante and the, the changes that have been made there. 
it's not the case that Aromodontis opened up all the roads. And I think that has to be clarified. There's no use um, allowed in resident residential areas in Horseshoe Valley and uh, Snow Valley. So I think you have to take that into account. It's not a open roads across Oromodonte. Um The other thing is that um, there's mention tonight that Orva users, they don't really want to be on the roads. They want to be on the forest. They want to be on the trails. Yet here we are, we're considering opening all the roads in spring water. So, you know, it's kind of one or the other. You either want to develop your trail network in the forest or, you know, you want to have a free for all. So, you know, maybe we can focus on looking at forest tracks and from the county and seeing what can be done there. Can we look at increasing the use of hydro corridors? I don't know what <coughs> agreements are in place right now with the clubs, but that's another option. Keep them off the roads, keep them on the trails where they should be, not affecting residents. Okay, if you are gonna go ahead with uh, these options that are allowing uh, increased use on the road, then uh, let's have a 12 month trial. Okay, let's come back, look at the impact on residents, the environment, okay, the roads, is there increased maintenance required? What I've noticed in our area is huge increase of side-by-sides, and if you've ever seen one of these machines, you know how big these are. They're not small ATVs, okay? Side-by-sides do a lot of damage, they're big, they're gonna take up a lot of room on township roads, okay? I'm not so sure that, you know, motorized vehicles, drivers, wanna be sharing the roads with a side-by-side, -side, right? There's not a lot of room, okay? Okay, we're at two minutes here. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anybody else like to come forward? Okay, so we're going to pull forward uh, item nine, which is the 9.1, the off-road vehicle use on municipal roads. And um, as the people who are tuning in, we had a, we had a special meeting earlier to, uh, to have a report on this. So um, we're basically uh, uh, considering this now, the next steps. And I'm gonna turn the chair over to Deputy Mayor Coughlin um, as uh, I have a motion that I'd like to uh, present with respect to this. Um, thank you, Marilyn, and I believe first we need to have a mover and seconder to get the report on the table, so mover. Councillor Moore, Councillor Chavin. All those in favor? Okay, so uh, to you, your... Thank you, thank you, Deputy Mayor. So, <clears throat> in review and consideration of the survey results and in discussions with others, um, I think that expanding the current system using option five is the best option to create a way to enable those who enjoy using off-road vehicles, ORVs I'll call them, to have movement to and from Waseca Beach, Tiny and Oro Medante and Springwater and the use of the Simcoe forests which are allowed. It also allows the use of some of the municipal roads, access to get gas and access to a variety of retail establishments and access uh, directly to allowed trails and roads by residents from their homes in the communities of Elmville, Hillsdale, Phelpston, Anton Mills, Gill Road area, and Fox Farm Road area. It allows north, south, east, and west travel on selected municipal roads in the township, and it keeps the ATVs off a main section of the North Simcoe Rail Trail. It allows, uh, the, the, the resolution that I'm proposing, allows uh, farmers to use ATVs for their operations as long as they have proper signage to indicate a farm vehicle. I think it is a good and fair compromise that we should send back to staff for finalization to try as a pilot program for a year. <clears throat> and I don't think at this time we should incorporate off-road motorcycles uh, with respect to this. So what I've done is I've Created, I've passed out the motion to council, and there are maps that, uh, to make it easier, that I've um, 
we'll distribute to you and the clerk uh, is able to put this up on the screen as well. So, um, the motion is that the report from the Director of Building and Bylaw Services regarding off-road vehicle use on municipal roadways dated December 18, 2019 be received and that the Council for the Township of Springwater resolves to direct staff to bring forth a future report and draft bylaw to consider the reuse of off-road vehicles on selected municipal roads as follows. All previously approved road allowances in municipal roadways per bylaw 211.44. And I'll, I'll stop and explain as I, as I go through the motion. So it's all of the uh, previously allowed um, roadways uh, that have been allowed up to this point in time. And then Floss Road 10 East from County Road 27 to the eastern limit of Springwater, <coughs> uh, Township of Oro Medante. Floss Road 10 West from County Road 27 to the western limit of Springwater to the township of Wasega Beach. And maybe, Clerk, could you, as we're going through this, could you uh, indicate? So Floss Road 10, that's what I've covered so far. Floss Road 10 is one up here. Right across. Right across over to Oral. And the existing system is the yellow line on this map, as was indicated before. Um, Usher's Road from Floss Road 10 West to Floss Road 8 West. So that's that portion there. And the purpose of this is to enable access to um, Elmville. And Floss Road 8 West from Usher's Road to the North Simcoe Rail Trail. And then the North Simcoe Rail Trail from Floss Road 8 West to Queen Street. So a way to get into Elmville, basically. <clears throat> and then Queen Street West and Queen Street East on Young Street South and Young Street North within the limits of the Elmville settlement area to allow access to the retail stores. On all other local municipal roads within Elmville settlement area, direct from home to the main routes only, so allows access by those who have ATVs uh, to access the trails from within Elmville. Then we go to Baseline Road from <coughs> Mill Street west to the northern limit of Springwater Township and Tiny. So that's right up there to get you up there. And then Floss Road 7 East from Baseline Road to Highway 93, Penetangashine Road, and continuing on Mill Street West from Baseline to 93 to get through Hillsdale to Oromodonte again. On all local roads within Hillsdale settlement area from home to the main route, so allow access from Hillsdale onto these trails. On all local roads within Phelpston settlement area from the home to the main route, so we're down to Phelpston. Rainbow Valley Road West from Phelpston Road to County Road 27 to allow access to the service station in Apto for gas. And then Old Second North from Mill Street uh, West to Horseshoe Valley Road West. And then Old Second South from Horseshoe Valley West to Story Road. And then along Story Road. So it's down here and over. And then Russell Road from Story Road up to Fox Farm Road. Then Beaver Lane from Russell Road to Nursery Road. And then Gill Road from the Hydro Corridor north of Gallagher Crescent to Beaver Lane. And then Nursery Road from Beaver Lane to the Hendry Main Forest Track. 
and then on all local roads within Anton Mill settlement area from home to the Hendry Forest Track to enable people to move from Anton Mills to that forest track. <coughs> and that such report incorporate consideration for uh, special exception usage by farmers on designated signed ORVs used for agricultural business operation on required municipal roads for this purpose. That seasonal usage periods, time of day, usage period, permit, permitting and required insurance coverage be um, reviewed and incorporated in the report and that the pilot test period for be tried for review and re-examination by council after one year trial period. So basically what this motion is trying to do is open up some roads to allow north, south, east, and west travel um, on the northern half of the township to allow access to and from Wasega Beach, Tiny, and Oro Medonte, uh, to allow access to retail, to allow access to forests, to allow access to getting gas, and to um, allow some access to the rail trail but keep traffic off a main portion, ATV traffic off a main portion of the, of the rail trail because of comments received. So uh, this is uh, basically a version of option five to increase the roads and yet not open it up to, to all roads. So I'll pause there. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Is there any questions or comments on option five? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, to Mayor Allen. That's backwards. Um, how would board, like, menacing people get to the trails? There's nothing there showing how to get there. Yeah, at present, um, there isn't. Um, so <coughs> under this proposal as it, as it is now, they'd have to trailer to one of the, one of the roads. Um, the only other, is that, that's, yeah. The only other possibility might be to, uh, to uh, extend along Hendry from Minnesing. So that would be a possibility for that portion from 26 to Nursery Road. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, are there any other questions or comments before I... Councillor Hanna? Uh, through the deputy to you, uh, Mayor. Uh, Roy Monk is here and you know he's a big uh, ATV person and he lives in uh, Anton Mills and him getting to the trails again would be eliminated as uh, Councillor Chapman points out, uh, was that uh, an oversight or? No, no, point? actually one of the points I mentioned and, and I'll repeat it on through all, sorry, through the chair, um, on all local roads within Anton Mills uh, settlement area, uh, they'd be able to ride from uh, their home to the Henry main forest track and then from there to what I just described. Follow on Councillor Hanna. I uh, follow up uh, through the deputy view. Um, was this uh, given to staff and, and did staff have any comments on it because it wasn't in the original presentation that we did at 5 o'clock? Um, I'm just curious if this was given to staff and they didn't comment on it, was that because they didn't agree? Marilyn? Um, I discussed it with staff and uh, through you, Chair, I would, uh, I would welcome any questions of staff with respect to it. Um, thank you, and before I do go to, or I can go to Director Polito first. Director Polito. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, we did take a look at it uh, this afternoon. At this point, we would take it back and, and have uh, a better look at it. Um, it. To me, it looks like it's, it's very similar to a um, option um, three just modified uh, with uh, a few differences uh, as part of it. Um, it appears to be doing exactly like the, the mayor had indicated, 
trying to get the ORV traffic towards Wasega Beach, Tiny, and Ormadante by using principal routes to get to uh, the location as efficiently as possible. Thank you, Director Flavel. Marilyn? Thank you to you, Chair. Um, with another significant difference being the exclusion of the Simcoe Rail Trail, the main portion of that, but only the inclusion that is necessary to get into Elmville. Uh, Councilor Cabral. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, um, thank you, Mary Allen, for uh, putting this together. It's uh, fairly comprehensive. Um, I, I do see that it still creates disparity between residents in Springwater Township. I can imagine people living, say, on the Little Ninth or uh, Floss Road 8 or Floss Road 5 wanting to access a trail or move from one part of Springwater to another and uh, being placed in a position where residents living on another road won't be able to, uh, they would have to have a trailer, whereas residents living on another road wouldn't have to have a trailer. Uh, I also see uh, this as presenting maybe some difficulty as far as signage and enforcement is concerned. We'd have signs all over the place. So uh, unfortunately, um, I, I would still uh, be in favor of option two at this point. Thank you, Councillor Cabral and Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, my, my first question, uh, Deputy, Deputy uh, Councillor Cabral there mentioned it, is how, how do you enforce this? Like, uh, I can ride on this road, but I can't ride on that road. So I'm, I, have, I have difficulties with that. There's one road here in particular you, you, uh, you're mentioning that they can open up, and it's a restricted road. I talked about it earlier. Floss Road 7 East from Baseline to 93, that's a restricted, and the, and the areas that are restricted now should stay restricted, and they are restricted because we've heard from the residents over the years about the noise and the dust, and I, I think we have to uh, respect that moving forward. There's, I'd like to, there's, some, there's good things here about this, timing, um, there's, there's good things in this about this, but I, we need to reverse it around, take the good things out of it and open the roads up so that, um, it's, so that we can enforce it. And, 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 uh, and I, I, I'm not going to say any more than that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, if there's no other comments, I'd just like to add to that um, I fully support of option two. I think it's what our residents have been asking for for many years. Um, understanding that there is still a future report to come forward. It will outline um, the incidences in our neighboring municipalities. It will outline the open and closed road allowances. We'll be able to walk through it, but I think that we need to show the residents that we have listened. We have 24 complaints. Um, and actually on that, through you, or through, through myself, <laughs> to uh, Director Ippolito, the 24 complaints that were listed for 2019, are those 24 individuals, or could that be one person complaining 24 times? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. I'm just going to maybe uh, consult with uh, my bylaw officer who might know if that is... 24 individual complaints, if I may, or if it's, uh, each one will be an incident, and she's going to shake her head if I'm saying this incorrectly, um, each one would be an independent incident. That's not to say that they might be the same individual who's complaining, but it will be a different incident. <coughs> and I've been confirmed that is correct. Thank you, Director. Um, I, again, am very excited to see this move forward and also on a trial basis so that we will revisit this. Um, so if there is a seconder to move forward on Mayor Allen's option five, which he has presented to us, uh, we would need that. Uh, so if there's anybody on the table that would like to second Mayor Allen's and not seeing a seconder, I will pass the chair back over to Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Right, so
so there's a mover and a seconder uh, to bring this on the table. Um, so Councillor Moore and Councillor Chapman, uh, are you uh, proposing option two then? Yes. Yes, okay. So option two is uh, bring forth a future report and draft bylaw to consider the use of off-road vehicles on all municipal roadways and permit additional unopened road allowances with select connecting trails for Central Ontario ATV Club in accordance with mapping outlined as Appendix B to the accompanying report. I would request a recorded vote, please. Uh, question. Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Marilyn, and through you, um, <coughs> maybe Director Ippolito, I'm not sure. Uh, the report that's going to be coming forth, um, understanding that we have been moving forward in a direction and now the council has come to an agreement on what we would like, what the direction is, how soon are we anticipating this report um, being that we do, now we are over the winter months, is this something we're hoping to have a resolution of council, opportunity for resolution of council in time for when the snow melts or how long, how, how much longer do we foresee this taking? Director Epolito. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. At this point, it's, it's going to be rather difficult to say, um, just with some uh, new personnel, which, which we probably want to get involved with this, being uh, our, our new Director of, of Parks and Rec, who's going to have a, a very important stake in all of this, uh, and is trying to get uh, his, his, uh, his feel for it. Um, I would say we understand that this is something that we need to bring forth. I think during the course of doing that, we can probably start with some of the legwork involved with the options, such as looking at possible review of the roads. With, with some limitations, we obviously have some winter conditions that we're going to be dealing with, but I think we can start consulting with, with certain individuals at this point. I would love to give you a firm date. We'll get it back to you, say March, April type of thing. At this point, I, I, I unfortunately would not be able to say that. Thank you. Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, I, I guess this would be just a comment with respect to some of the questions that were raised earlier on with uh, respect to some of the other jurisdictions and issues that they'd have in particular with Saga Beach. Uh, would that be something that we might be able to work towards? And would be, there be a, an opportunity when that kind of information comes in that we could get kind of like an interim report on what their experience has been? <coughs> that's, a, that's just a comment, right? That's not a question. Oh, yeah. Director Ippolito. Thank you, uh, through Mayor Allen to uh, uh, Councillor Cabral. Um, that's something that we can definitely do an interim report. Um, I'll discuss it with our staff and, and see if something can uh, can be brought forth just to see how the steps are proceeding as part of it. Thank you, Clerk Ainsworth. A recorded vote was requested by Mayor Allen. When I state your name, please state yes or no. Councillor Cabral. Uh, that the report from the Director of Building and Bylaw Services regarding off-road vehicle use on municipal roadways, roadways dated December 18th, 2019 be received and that option two be approved, bring forth a future report and draft bylaw to consider the use of off-road vehicles on all municipal roadways and permit additional unopened road allowances with select connecting trails for Central Ontario ATV Club in accordance with the mapping outlined as Appendix B to the accompanying report. Councillor Cabral? Yes. Councillor Hanna? Yes. Councillor Chapman? Yes. Councillor Moore? Yes. Councillor Ritchie? Yes. Deputy Mayor Coughlin? Yes. And Mayor Allen? No. That motion is carried. Okay, we're moving on to minutes, um, which is 6.1. And can I have a mover and a seconder to get this on the table? Councillor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, we have removed uh, number three because the minutes of the Special Meeting Council November 25, 27, December 2, 9, and 11 are not quite finalized yet. So we're talking about 
the first two. Any questions with respect to these? Yes, Councillor Hannum. Uh, thank you. Uh, the concerns raised by uh, Mr. Strawn, where they'd be uh, included in that one as being exempt, or is that the minutes of uh, December the 4th for regular council meeting? Uh, Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you. Um, the minutes that were reflected w would be for the December 5th special meeting. Uh, it would be up to members of council. I haven't had a chance to review the information that has been provided, so members may wish to pull those minutes, um, and I could review them and um, bring them back to the next meeting of council, if council so wishes. I, I would be pleased to request or make a motion that they do be pulled and that the information be added as, as was stated. I don't think we need a motion. We'll pull that, Councillor Hanna. So we're talking about the minutes of the regular meeting of Council December 4th. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Next, we have the minutes of boards, committees, and organizations, 6.2. <clears throat> Move and a second to get on the table, please. Councillor Moore, Councillor Chapman. Any questions with respect to these? Okay, these are the minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee, October 22. Minutes of the Culture Activities Advisory Committee, November 5. Recreation Advisory Committee, October 22. And Recreation Advisory Committee, October 29. All those in favor? Carry. Item 7 is correspondence and information items. <coughs> Mover and second to get that on the table, please. Councilor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Any questions, comments with respect to one, two, or three? Councilor Cabral. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, actually, I guess I'm, I'm going to have to defer to both you and the deputy with respect to uh, the changes for this is occurring on February um, the 3rd. Um, are, are, is, is county going to be reaching out to the residents in other ways, uh, maybe through a letter to let them know exactly what date is going to be what date for putting their trash and their organics and stuff out? Yes. Um, I, I just, I, I kind of get what they're doing, but um, I just think folks need to know I think what, we'll what do. day is going to be garbage and then what Good day is going to be. Good yeah. question. Good uh, question. We have a full length uh, thing out here explaining it in the front hall. But I'll leave that for Deputy Mayor Coughlin to include it in her update and county, okay? Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, that, the OPP Municipal Policing Bureau News Bulletin, December 219, County of Simcoe News Release, Changing Coming to Restore Consistency of Curbside Waste Collection, County of Simcoe, a member of applications for County of Simcoe Food Council. All those in favor? Carried. Next, we have the item 8.1, revised draft 220 budget. Can I have a mover and second to get that on the floor? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Moore. Okay, I'll turn it over to CAO Schmidt to uh, give us an update since our last meeting with respect to the budget. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. So you may recall that uh, on November 20th, uh, uh, staff presented the, the draft budget to council which at that time proposed a 0% increase uh, on the township's portion. Uh, however, when taking in the county's uh, approved budget of 2% in the provincial government's, uh, assuming the education tax rate remains neutral, uh, we were coming in at, a, at a blended tax increase of 0.67%. Uh, just to clarify, that didn't include any new program changes that, uh, that we were proposing. Subsequent to that, there's been uh, five budget deliberation meetings whereby resolutions have been approved uh, for consideration for tonight. Uh, so before you tonight is the revised draft uh, uh, 2020 budget, which is proposing a $33,000 net tax surplus. Uh, so this does include all the resolutions that have been approved by council uh, at all of those deliberation meetings. So what does that translate into for an average residential property? So an average residential property being assessed at 478826 This will result in a property tax reduction of 0.25% for the township's portion. Yes, I said a reduction. Uh, and uh, if we take into account the County of Simcoe's approved budget of 2%, and assuming, again, that the education rate remains neutral, uh, the blended tax increase is currently estimated at 0.57%, again, for an average residential property assessed at 478. 
In addition to that, the policing charge is proposed to remain at 240 for residential properties and 120 for farmland properties. The water operating budget is proposing a 0% increase in water rates as, uh, as per the uh, water, uh, 2017 water and wastewater rate study. And the wastewater operating budget is proposing a, excuse me, <clears throat> a 4.3% increase over 2019. Uh, and I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that update. <clears throat> Any questions or comments? Councillor Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to make a comment. While residents may or may not know, I was uh, preoccupied in Mexico playing golf. But I did it, uh, advance their concerns to uh, councillors uh, Carbell, uh, Moore, and the clerk, and they were kind enough to uh, advance them for the residents in Ward 5 uh, for deliberation. And I, from reading what I've seen out here, I understand they did a good job, and council did uh, consider them. Thank you. Other comments? <coughs> Thank you again, CAO Schmidt, for uh, putting together a great budget and for staff for uh, all of the work they did in, in answering questions and uh, reworking things. I really do appreciate it. I think, it's, I think it's a great budget. So we have a mover and a seconder that the report from the Chief Administrative Officer regarding the revised draft 220 budget dated December 18, 219 be received and that the revised draft 220 consolidated budget as presented December 18, 219 be approved and that the 220 policing charge remain at $240 per property for all properties except for farmland and managed forest properties which will be charged $120 per property and that the $220 tax rate bylaw uh, be presented including the county and education requisitions as soon as the tax ratios have been approved by the county of Simcoe. All those in favor? Unanimously, unanimously carried. Thank you. Next, we move on to 9.2, Community Improvement Plan Application by Lakeland Irrigation, 6 Queen Street East. Can I have a mover and seconder to get that on the table? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Chapman. <coughs> Any questions, discussion with respect to this? Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, just a, a quick question, I guess. In this particular one, uh, when I look down at what they were uh, planning on doing, I'm just wondering, um, when, when, when they do the, the change up at the front and they have uh, like the sign there, I don't know, is that a, a sign that's a relief sign sticking out that would stay with the building once they moved and have to be replaced? Or is that something that they can just take down and the rest of the beautiful front of the building remains? Um, do Director, we know, know that? Director Belcor? Sorry, Director <laughs> Spagnol. Spagnol. His image is in my brain. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through you to, to Councillor Cabral. Um, just, I'd like uh, just some more clarification on the question. I'm not sure I'm understanding what's, what's being asked here. Uh, thank you. I, I guess what I'm asking is um, that they're going to do this, and, of course, uh, it, it, it fits the program criteria, but I'm wondering if where it says lake lands and underneath it it has uh, an irrigation, I think it says, and then the thing to the left, is that something that can be easily removed? Like, is it a relief or is it part of a... Uh, a sign that fits on there. I'm just thinking if they sell the building, um, that, that, that's, that's the only thing I'm wondering about is how easy it would be to remove that should someone else take it over and wanna, want, to, want to do it again type of thing because the rest of it's gonna be completely refurbished. Director? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Answering to Councillor Cabral. Uh, as far as the, the replacement and removal of the sign, it would, it would be subject to whatever any sign installer would have to do to reface the building. Um, so that, that question as to whether or not it'd be difficult or, or, or easy to remove, I, I'm not sure of at this point, but it would have to be something if the sign was going to be replaced, it would have to be done by a professional, make sure that it, it integrates with the building, with the facade that's been improved. Follow on. I, I guess my concern is since it's incorporated into the price, I, I just kind of get the sense that townships helping offset, you know, in advertising and I, and I get that part, but that's why I want to know just how difficult it would be to to remove it off of there, but thank you very much. You've answered my question. Councillor Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, nothing uh, derogatory about the business company here trying to uh, get money from the township to improve their property. Uh, I've just always been on the record for not supporting 
raising taxes from other residents of spring water to get them to somebody else. So I'll vote against it for those reasons. Uh, Councillor Ritchie. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I just want to point out I, I, I support this community improvement program 150%. This is one way of, of helping store owners improve uh, their storefronts, improve the downtown. And little, every little bit like this counts when you're a small community uh, fighting for a piece of the pie with the big box stores. Having said that, uh, one, one thing I, I like, I like the whole thing about Lakelands. Uh, they're a very professional company. The mural on the side, it reminds me if you go up to the Midland area, uh, you'll see lots of murals in some of the older buildings. And it just shows the history that, uh, the, the great history we have in this area here. So I, I support this 100%. And if you go down the street and look at some of these buildings that have upgraded, Advantage Homes was one there that was just done. Looks great. Further down the street, uh, Exit Realty. I believe that's my competition, but the building looks great. Uh, there's, there's different buildings along the street there on either side that have taken this money and used it and to help them. And, and uh, I think this is a great. Uh, thank you. Okay, any other comments? All right, the motion reads that, that the report from the planner regarding uh, uh, CI 219-004, Lakelands Irrigation, dated December 18, 219, be received, and the council, having considered the application presented, the requirements of the community improvement plan, and total funding requested, direct as follows, that the application be approved, and the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the appropriate agreements. All those in favor? Carried. Opposed? Carried. Okay, next we're moving on uh, item 10, 10.1 is the action reports, the consent agenda. We have 10.2 through 10.6. Can I have a mover and second to get it on the table? Councillor Moore, Councillor Chapman. <coughs> Any comments or desire to pull any one of these? Councillor Hanna. Uh, thank you. I would like to hear from our deputy fire chief. There he is. Uh, about ten four, uh, four, please. Okay. Before I do that, any p a desire to pull any of these? Ten point two, three, four, five, and six. You have a question about or want it pulled? A question. Okay. After we deal with, we'll deal with Councillor Hannes first, and then we'll come back to you. Thank you. So. Okay, there are questions. So um, go ahead, Councillor Hanna, to the fire, uh, Deputy Fire Chief. Well, thank you. Uh, this came forward under the uh, ream of our previous Fire Chief, and there was objections to it at that time. I don't know what has changed in it, and I would just like a, an explanation. Um, and they came to, Councillor Hanna, were you here when they came and delegated? Yes, sir, I was. Okay. Um, and, oh. But if you recall back when the... Yes. Fire yes. Chief was here, this was objected, uh, re no, and rejected. No, I, I did object to it, and basically the reason I did is because I didn't see that it offered anything further, and yet the existing agreement uh, was a wider covering, in my opinion, to be able to rely on. But I turn to you, Deputy uh, Fire Chief, to comment, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, to Councilor Hanna. Um, when it was presented before, um, I kind of re-looked at it, and one thing that wasn't uh, said was our uh, fees and bylaw covers, um, for example, we go to a county road. We don't bill the county. We bill the parties that are involved. If we do a rescue into the uh, reforestation, those parties are involved. I did a little digging. Um, the only thing I've seen is structure fires that we have never billed for. Um, if we have had fires in the county forest, we have billed back to the county because we are uh, protecting those. So most of our fees by law uh, does cover the cost that we would do, um, with the exception of uh, the buildings that are involved. Um, other than that, uh, there is some training that is uh, enhanced. I know I've seen that in the, uh, the last video as well. Uh, we do not have anybody in our staffing that can train to that, uh, to that level, that SP 103 level. 
Uh, we have our fire prevention who's here tonight. Uh, his background is for us firefighting. He has done training for us uh, as a training ground, but no cert certification uh, for that. So as of right now, we're the only department in the county that uh, haven't got this signed. Uh, and by doing that, we w could potentially miss out on this training opportunity as well with the rest of the county members. So my understanding that is your, in your opinion, the the only detriment to not being involved uh, or to, to not signing this new agreement? Yeah, again, Mayor Ellen, um, my opinion, I think we should sign it and uh, have a united front going. Uh, again, we are not losing any funds. Uh, we've been billing for years now, um, and I can provide totals of what we've built just basically on county roads over the last many years just so you can kind of get an example. Again, the only thing uh, I've seen is we haven't billed for structure fires. Great examples in museum when it caught fire a few years ago. But there is uh, in our fees bylaw, uh, if we have a fire watch, we can bill. If we have um, accidents, we bill. Uh, rescues, we bill. We are compensated those monies. The only thing I've seen was the structure fire part that we have never billed for. I think I have to go along with the recommendation of staff. It's uh, uh, a little out of my pay scale. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, we're dealing with 10.2. Councillor Cabral. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. I guess it's a question with respect to the development charges here. And um, uh, on page two, it says council has the authority to waive development charges and allow for specific exemptions or specific special considerations. Township councils previously considered temporary agreements to postpone payment of development charges and has required securities in the amount of 10,000 to ensure compliance with the agreement. I guess my question is, were those previous times the same circumstances as this? Because I'm reading this and it sounds like they just want a bit of an extension because some legislation might come down the pipe where they won't have to pay the development charges, uh, whereas if they wanted to move forward right now, because this has already been before council before, uh, those development charges would be payable now. So I, I guess I want to know, have we done this in these exact same circumstances? Or are the circumstances referred to here different? Thank Dr. you. Spagnol. Thank you, Mayor Allen, through to Councillor Cabral. Kind of, sort of, <laughs> is the best answer I can give you. Um, the, the one instance that we can think of was with respect to a planning application that was in the works where it was dealing with uh, a second farm dwelling or a second, a second dwelling unit um, where the DCs would have been applicable because we were dealing with a separate building that would be used for residential use. In that instance, I believe the township's development charge bylaw was under review and that there might be some consideration of change that might have had an impact on the application of those development charges. So in this instance, this is similar in that we're looking at potential changes at the provincial level, which may waive development charges on a separate residential building, which we foresee coming down the pipe once those um, once the proclamation is made. So it, it's similar in the sense that we're still waiting for final approval of changes to a development charge act. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Spagnol. Uh, I, I guess also here on this particular item, uh, I'm wondering if uh, we're going to find ourselves in the same position where someone else is going to be asking for the same consideration come down the road. I don't know what the development charges would be in this particular case, but to be quite honest with you, it seems to me that township's losing out on them. Director Spagnol. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through to Councillor Cabral. Uh, there is most likely another, another instance where this exact request could potentially come about uh, because we are dealing with um, additional separate applications for additional dwelling units. Uh, one comment that I would like to make though is that, I, I'm, and uh, CAO Schmidt could confirm this, but the, one of the major concerns with respect to Bill 108 and the exemption from the development charges for the residential uses, exactly that is that there could be an implication to the municipality for a shortage of funds for services. And I believe that was a common concern that was raised across the province. 
follow up? Yeah, um, I, this is coming across as a pool house, though. And, and that also kind of makes me ponder whether or not pool houses is, is a situation where we should be letting the DC slide, that's all. Uh, Director Spagnol. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, through to Councillor Cabral. I think the, the pool house label of this structure is somewhat misleading in that it does represent a separate accessory dwelling unit on the property. So to, to properly phrase what we're dealing with here, I know what it says in the reports that have been before council, it should be referenced as a separate accessory dwelling unit. Councillor Hanna. Thank you. I was just wondering after the discussion if this uh, opens the door for retroactive uh, requests. <coughs> Director Spagel. Uh, Mayor Allen, through to Councillor Hanna. I'm just looking at uh, CAO Schmidt shaking his head in the uh, in, in, in rejecting that that whole consideration so i have to say that it's a no on on retroactively doing this but i'll pass the question on the ceo ceo schmidt uh, thank you mr mayor through you to members of council so i guess the other thing that maybe isn't being discussed here is is actually the the political uh, uh framework that's happening right now at the provincial government where they are trying to assist with uh allowing for secondary dwelling units and, and trying to increase housing. So that regime hasn't necessarily been the case a few years ago when maybe we've dealt with some of these other applications. So in my mind, no, it wouldn't be at retroactive. Once you pay, you pay, you get your building permit, and you move on. But this particular case, and, and further to uh, Director Spagno's comments, you know, um, I guess the, the one difference is, is that, you know, when we updated our DC background study, in 2018, we did get some requests from the agricultural community to consider uh, waiving of DCs as it relates to residential uh, dwellings for uh, farmhands, if you will. And so in that particular case, uh, there was an application that came in and the understanding <coughs> entered into an agreement whereby essentially they did post securities. And then once the, the DC background study and bylaw was approved, it did uh, include those provisions or those exemptions. And so uh, those uh, DCs essentially were, were waived. Uh, so in this particular case that we're talking about here, it's provincial legislation that uh, from, for all intents and purposes will likely be moving forward, but I don't have that crystal ball for sure to, to say it's gonna happen, so. Um. Okay. So the uh, resolution is that action report items 10 to through 10-6 be received and that the recommendations contained therein be approved as presented. Before I read them out, Councillor Cabral seems to. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mayor Allen, uh, I, I would uh, really prefer to be able to vote on 10-2. Okay, so we'll pull 10-2. Thank you. So 10-3 is investing in Canada Infrastructure Program Greenstream funding application. 10-4 is wildland firefighting agreement for Simcoe County Forest. 10-5, SU 2002 2002-001 Scarlet Line draft plan of subdivision request for extension draft plan approval. And 10-6 is agreement with CDW Canada Corp Partnership with Ontario Education Collaborative with the exception of item 10.2. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, moving to 10.2. Councillor Cabral, do you have a, a motion with respect to that? Okay, sorry. Um, so I need a mover and a seconder to get this on the floor, please. Councillor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. And this is the report from the planner regarding the temporary agreement for Second unit development charges at 2350 Gill Road dated December 18, 2019 be received and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the necessary temporary agreement. So Councillor Cabral, I'll turn it to you for comment. Thank you, Mayor Allen. <coughs> um, I guess I, I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of uh, <coughs> if they're gonna change legislation and the legislation hasn't been changed, your options are to wait or move forward. And uh, we found ourselves doing exactly that a couple of months ago. And uh, it ended up being that uh, it was probably the better move for us. But on this particular one here, they're asking 
for us to give them that uh, temporary agreement so they can move forward in the hopes that the provincial government policy statement is going to say that they don't have to pay the development charges. But as it stands right now, um, those development charges would normally be payable. So uh, I'm of the position that that's what should happen. So you're proposing a, a motion with respect to that? No, I'm just simply saying that uh, we don't enter into the temporary agreement, which I believe means that we don't agree to it. Okay. All right, other comments with respect to this? Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Marilyn. Um, through you to uh, Director Spagnol. Um, I guess I'm just looking for clarity as to why this individual um, case is being brought forward. Is there a timeline that they're in contention with? I know we've made exceptions, like you said, for the migrant worker, but this is the first of this that I've seen, so I'm just curious as to why this is being brought forward and being recommended. Director Spagnol. Thank you, Marilyn. Through to Councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, really, what what has happened is the approval for the second unit has gone through. The property property owner would like to submit building permit. Has understood that there might be changes to legislation and is wondering if there's any way to take advantage of that legislation change for the development charge. But they want to get an answer on this to get moving as soon as possible. That's really the the root of the request. They'd like to get their building permit but not pay the development charge up front, or if there is the potential for having an exemption, utilize any change in legislation to potentially have that, uh, that exemption from the charge. Follow on. Uh, thank you. And I'm, I'm fully supportive of, of having secondary suites and, and using that as a way to, to move forward with the affordable housing, but I don't think that there's one resident in Springwater Township that enjoys playing GCs, and that wouldn't come forward asking for this, should we do this, and I mean, it's, it's to me, it's a large request, and I do agree with Councillor Cabral that um, the, the, the bylaw or the, the provincial law is still in place. Our DCs are still in place, so I think that I think this sets a precedent, and I think that if we allow this to happen, it's going to be difficult for the next person to say to say no to them. Um, if there, if we were to look at some sort of a um, initiative put forward by this council, that moving forward between now and when the province all secondary suites or all secondary dwellings would be I guess exempt from DCs I can see that but right now we're talking about one case and I just feel that if we continue to look at individual cases um, I, I think that we're going to be having a lot of requests for that. Councillor Hanna. Thank you Mayor. Uh, I guess the other thing that I don't quite understand is when the provincial legislation could come forward. If it's only a couple of months, then it'd be worth the resident waiting. If it's going to be six months or a year, well, the, the resident might want to go forward. Um, and I agree with what's being said about trying to make affordable housing for people, but also, as was also pointed out, all our other residents have built, have had to pay the development charges. So I'm kind of caught in the middle here. Um, I would suggest that if uh, this is application is turned down, the resident consider um, delaying going forward until uh, there's some idea of when the legislation will pass. Director Spagnol, any crystal ball on timing? Um, Mayor Allen, no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I could look down the table to see O. Schmidt or... or uh, A lot of shaking heads there. <laughs> no, no, we don't know. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to vote on this. Do you want me to read this again? or Yes. That the report from the planner regarding the temporary agreement for second unit development charges at 2350 Gill Road dated December 18, 2019 be received and that the mayor and clerk be authorized to execute the necessary temporary agreement. So voting yes is allowing this to go through with a temporary agreement. Voting no is a voting against this. All those in favor? All those opposed? That's unanimously opposed. Thank you. Next we move on to uh, information reports item 11 11.1 mover and second to get it on the table please councillor cabral councillor moore we have items one through eight any questions with respect to any of these councillor hannah uh, i'd just like to make a comment on the credit card reports okay anybody else like to pull any of these okay councillor hannah Thank you, and, and I'd like to state in advance, I'm not trying to pick on our mayor. 
uh, because I've gone back in previous years since I've been on council back to Tony George's time and the credit card charges by mayors for lunches and other social things were extremely high over the years. I have noted that Mayor Allen's up until the uh, September quarter, uh, $346.15 for lunches, um, lunch meetings, um, not to say you shouldn't have meetings, but we do have a fairly uh, elaborate mayor's office that the rest of us don't have um, an option to use. And we have lunches, at least I know I have lunches, and I don't claim the expenses for it, and I don't accept gratuities for it either. So I'm just suggesting that if residents out there are wondering, if anybody looks at this stuff, I'm just pointing out that I do, but Mayor Nallen is not the worst mayor we've ever had when it comes to charging uh, lunch and meeting meals. Thank you. Okay, um, I'll just make a comment on that. Um, uh, that uh, uh, I, the, uh, as mayor, I'm provided with a, a spring water credit card. I only use it when um, uh, I'm out discussing township business um, with uh, with uh, residents uh, or or suppliers. Uh, the, uh, the lunches that had been charged for also are alternate, so uh, I pick up the tab one time, the other person picks up the tab the other time. So uh, it's, it's for the amount of business and, and for the progress that happens in the township, in those lunches, it's, uh, it's very good value. So any other uh, questions or discussions? Councillor Cabral? Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, and I don't know if this is a moot point, but I'm gonna, I'd like to direct it to uh, Oh, he's over there. <laughs> Sorry. It's Parks and Rec, but I, I don't know if uh, um, Craig will be able to answer it. Maybe Ryan would. But I, I'm, I'm curious about uh, the, the camps uh, and, and whether or not we provide lunches for the kids on a regular basis. Uh, it's just that they seem to be eating a lot of pizza here. So I just, is that normal practice? That was my only question with respect to them. I guess we've got them for the whole day type of thing. Okay, um, through myself to the CAO on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Councillor Cabral. So, uh, actually, a couple of years, great question. So, a couple of years ago, uh, we were providing lunches, and uh, some of our camp counselors were actually having to um, um, look after the cash, if you will. And so, recently, in the last couple of years, we actually have provided for online registration, which includes uh, the option to purchase lunch. So they do pay, uh, the individuals or the, the parents, if you will, uh, do pay for the lunches, and then obviously the, the township goes out and, and supplies those lunches to, to, the, to the, camp, the campers, so. Thank you. Okay, so we're dealing with one through eight. Credit card report Q1 uh, of 219, credit card report Q2 of 219, Credit card report Q3 of 219, check register October 219 and November 219, tra draft traffic calming measures guide for council review and comment, OPA 219.001 and ZB 219.012, Rounds Ranch at 1922 County Road 92 and the building permit activity summary, November 219. All those in favor? Carried. Verbal reports, uh, official plan update or economic development update. Uh, Director Spagnell. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, just uh, the official plan review update. Um, as Council knows, we had our Section 26 public meeting on December 5th. The consultant WSP has taken back the comments that have been received from Council, the questions, and um, there will be a report coming forward, uh, most likely uh, the second month. So. February in the new year to move the project forward to phase two, but also provide responses to the questions and the comments that were received as part of that public meeting. Thank you. Any questions with respect to that? Okay, moving on to county update, uh, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, and uh, further to Councillor Cabral's comments on the uh, change uh, to the waste schedule. Um, I do believe that the county has provided um, a media release which has gone out to the news and to the radio. It's available through the uh, County Connect, sorry, County Collects app 
um, which was circulated on the county website, but also through uh, the, mun the municipality. Um, and thank you for that. Um, I'm not sure, I guess, if, if we feel that there should be a direct mailing. I can inquire as to whether or not it has been. Um, but I guess there would be a new schedule going out, so I don't know if it would just be the new the new schedule. Um, so I can inquire to that and then respond to council as to, because we get that calendar, right? So it, it, no, I don't know if there is an updated calendar or when that's produced, so I can follow up to that. But I think that's probably the most logical form to communicate. If, if I may just clarify, um, yes, they were holding off the calendar uh, to get resolution to this on in the interim. So the calendar is being finalized to incorporate this change and will be coming out uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, as Deputy, Cog uh, Deputy Mayor Coggan has said, there's been pretty extensive uh, uh, social media on this. And as I reiterate, there's a, there's a, a banner right at our entrance here that uh, describes by picture what, uh, what's happening as of February the 3rd. Councillor Cabral? No, thank you. Uh, that kind of might be very helpful, but um, I, I guess f for me, it's um, I just hopefully we're going to know what day we put our garbage out, like when that starts for the alternating week, rather yeah. than yeah. that. That's the only on your, bit on of your, a confusion. On your way out tonight, it says I it right will there. Have a look. And uh, <laughs> we will also, I think we have already, but uh, CA Schmidt, I think we put it on our our uh, Twitter, our website, and we will be continuing to do so. CA Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. And, and th further to your last comment there, so our communications officer has been working with the county and will continue to work with the county to provide further information to our residents. And my understanding is that they, the county will be ramping up their communication program as it relates to this and as it gets closer to, to the date. Uh, further to that, uh, we are looking at the possibility of also, we have interim tax bills that we're going out in mid to late uh, January. And so the idea is, is uh, try to have something in the in those tax bills as well to to provide to our residents. So, I'll well, just to add two to that. Hopefully, you got a mailing uh, with respect to this. And in that mailing, there was a coupon uh, <clears throat> that if you take to any of the Simcoe County waste sites, you'll get a, a free bin, blue bin, extra blue bin, because you're going to probably need it to uh, put out more of the blue bin recycling, which now you can mix together. You don't have to separate the plastics and metal from the paper. So you have an extra blue bin, you put it all together, so in a lot of ways it's a lot easier. Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Will they be taking the dark plastic now too? No, they'll leave that in your snowbank. <laughs> Thank you. I guess my other question would be, is there going to be any type of cost savings uh, now that they've sorted it all out? Because I know they were putting a lot of money into additional trucks and whatnot. There will be... Um, additional cost savings more importantly we're going to catch up to the uh, to the garbage collection so that it should be on schedule that's what we're told and um, there will be definite economies uh, as a result of this keep in mind this is an interim solution uh, for uh, the remainder of this contract and staff will is has gone out for requests for proposals for renewing the contract uh, starting in a two-year period, which is going to be coming forward to County Council uh, to review, and we're probably going to be having a workshop with respect to that because it's going to be a very significant um, contract with lots of considerations about the future of how we manage waste collection in Simcoe County. Councillor Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Did you say there was a coupon coming out or it has come out? Because I haven't got my mail in a couple of weeks, so I it don't know. It has come out, and uh, so it should be in that stack on your kitchen counter. No, it'll be limited. piled up at the box. But hurry, because they're limited. It's not yeah, one per limited. resident. Yeah. I suggest you I had another rushing. question, now I forgot what it was. Okay, you'll remember oh. it. Okay. Uh, we, so that's, that's county update, right? Okay. Municipal updates. Councillor Chapman. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I'm just commenting on the Aunt Mill Santa Claus parade that happened on December. Great turnout, great afternoon. Um, lots of kids. It was well received. Also, for the menacing tree lighting that happened a couple of weeks ago, we we changed the date due to the storm, and we had a fantastic turnout. Um, resident donated. Um, um, Donations and food for the food bank, which we have donated to the Elmville Food Bank. So I thank everyone for that. 
and we are in planning of Menacing Mini Fest. Okay, Councilor Hanna. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to our Deputy Fire Chief, will the Santa Claus be coming around on the fire trucks Christmas Eve? Deputy Fire Chief. Thank you, Mary Allen, to Councillor Hanna. Yes, um, Almville will be doing theirs on the 23rd. Uh, they do their kids' Christmas party the same night, so they, uh, they start in Almville, and then they uh, go down to Phelpson and do that area as well. The 24th, our uh, stations 2, 3, and 4 will be out um, in Hillsdale, Midhurst, uh, Menacing, Ant Mills, just to name a few, but all the communities in the southern part of the township, they'll be out. Uh, just like to acknowledge them too. They do uh, start this about two in the afternoon, getting ready. And I know in past years they go till about 11 p.m. on Christmas Eve. So it's a big commitment they uh, they do for the the folks. Lots of inquiries on it, so people are looking forward to it. So as long as everything goes good that night, and with no calls, we'll be uh, around by your place. So thank you, if I may. It's very much appreciated, so thank you. Councillor Cabral. Actually, this is, thank you, Mayor Allen, directed to uh, Deputy Chief French. <clears throat> My understanding is we just had a recruitment, and uh, I'd really appreciate it if you might like to uh, bring us up to speed on uh, what our results were and how things are looking. Deputy Chief. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Cabral. Um, yeah, so last evening we had our orientation. Uh, go kind of back it up a bit. We started in uh, October. Um, we ended up hiring five people. Uh, we did another uh, posting, I believe it was late October, maybe early November. Uh, about 40 applicants. Out of that 40 applicants, uh, we took on 20. So as last evening, uh, we started with the orientation of 25 people. Um, some good, good candidates. Um, and it's going to help some of our stations, Station 4, Station 2. Um, so kind of looking forward to that. They will be starting uh, Jan the first weekend in January. Uh, they'll be training for approximately four months. They'll get the summer off, and then they'll come back for a month and a half to finish up their training with uh, some uh, practical and then uh, live fire. And then they will be full response to everything. So. Thank Sorry, you, Councillor Hanna. Uh, through you to the Deputy Fire Chief. Was there any um, effort to reach out to the county building, county employees, county school board to try to recruit people that would be available in the daytime in the southern part of the township to respond to fire calls? Deputy Chief. Thank you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Hanna. Um, we didn't reach out. However, we did have uh, one or two employees from the county uh, join our force. Uh, also for the Hillsdale area, we took on um, three, f we'll call it the two hatters, but they're full-time employments in the city. So that's going to help us in the daytime uh, tremendously up in that area as well with the, the shift work and that. Um, another one was a police officer. Um, yeah, so there, there is a wide variety of uh, skilled people that we did bring on, uh, that including uh, one of the people that works for the forestry in the county, so he's going to be a great asset when we do get those wildland fires. Just wanted to um, turn it to over to uh, CAO <coughs> Schmidt uh, to give us a brief update on the CPAC meeting that he and I attended this week. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to members of council. So, uh, yes, so the mayor and myself uh, attended the uh, quarterly uh, community policing advisory committee yesterday up in the town of Wasega Beach with our, our colleagues from Wasega Beach and, and Clearview. So some of the things that, that, that were discussed uh, that uh, I can bring forward is, is uh, uh, some stats that were provided to us for, uh, first of all, for motor vehicle collisions. So uh, based on their stats uh, for the, I guess, the first nine months of, of 2019, there was uh, uh, 254 motor vehicle collisions in the township. And uh, interesting enough, uh, the top two causes or I guess top three, I'll call it, uh, is uh, f in spring water specifically is, and just be clear about this, they say speed, but it's not speeding. It's actually speed as it relates to uh, weather conditions. So people speeding in 
events like today and not uh, 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 driving according to, to the road conditions. So uh, 54 uh, collisions were uh, uh, specific to that. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there was uh, uh, 29 collisions uh, due to following too closely. Uh, 24 collisions were due to animal or wild or domestic animal involved. And then 23 of them, in addition, were inattentive drivers. So individuals uh, possibly on, on cell phones and, and so on and so forth. So some interesting information there that was shared with us. Um, in addition to that, uh, there were five key locations in Springwater Township that made up 30% of these, or 37% of these collisions. Uh, one being Highway 26, where there was 25 collisions. County Road 27, where there was 22 collisions. Horseshoe Valley Road, which there was 18 collisions. Crossland Road, which there were 17. And Wilson, where there was uh, 12. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I guess some of the highlights were uh, the number of occurrences that have, uh, that have happened in the first three quarters of, of uh, 2019, uh, fairly uh, similar to 2018. Um, um, and other than that, uh, there was uh, some discussion about uh, community uh, safety and well-being plans. So uh, staff will be coming back to council in the very near future to discuss uh, the process as it relates to community safety and well-being plans. For those that aren't aware, uh, we will be required to implement a plan effective uh, January 1st, 2021. Uh, the County of Simcoe has graciously taken on the lead for all of us within the county. They're not required to have a plan, but uh, due to resourcing challenges for uh, most of us, uh, they have taken on the initiative and, and are footing the bill for this as well. So we are working closely with them to, uh, to have a plan in place for uh, the township. Again, uh, I'll be bringing something forward to you uh, in the near future. Uh, we did talk about photo radar. Uh, I know there was a comment from Councillor Hanna and Councillor Cabral at the last uh, budget meeting around photo radar. So we did discuss that a little bit with, with that committee. Um, they provided us some high level information that essentially is uh, uh, essentially the same information that the province has, has provided to us uh, in their release at early uh, December. Uh, so staff will be obviously investigating this a little bit further. Uh, they did talk about kind of the differences between uh, a red light camera versus a, a, a photo radar, which uh, are different. And again, we can get into that uh, when we bring uh, a report back on the photo radar. Uh, they did uh, discuss some information about the online reporting. So uh, there is an online re reporting tool on the OPP website for citizens to self-report on, on uh, particular matters, speeding, uh, dangerous driving, uh, you know, uh, noise uh, complaints as it relates to, uh, to vehicles and so on and so forth. So that is something that uh, we'll be working with our communications officer on to ensure that uh, we have a link on our website to that. Um, uh, other than that, uh, uh, I think the, I'll leave it at that, Mr. Mayor, for now. Thank you. Good summary. Any questions with respect to that? Councillor Hanna? Thank you, uh, Mayor, through to the CAO. Uh, you didn't mention ride. Uh, ride is a big thing, in, in, especially on St. Vincent in Midhurst. That's the only time residents actually see a police vehicle that's uh, not uh, attending to an accident on St. Vincent is when there's ride, and they usually do ride uh, this time of the year. I've been away and I haven't seen him, but I, I didn't even remember seeing ride there last year, so I'm just wondering if the OPP are no longer doing ride programs. CEO Schmidt, they didn't, we didn't discuss that, but I'll let you address that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it is something, uh, th further to the Mayor's comment, uh, not something that we discussed yesterday, but definitely something we can, I can circle back with them on. Uh, I'm, I don't want to speak for them. I, mean, I assume that they will be doing it or they are continuing to do it. Whether or not it's visible in our community, I'm not sure. Uh, I will be honest with members of council and I uh, uh, don't want to speak out of turn here, but uh, some of the comments made yesterday at the meeting uh, were uh, very specific to Wasaga Beach and a lot of service levels being addressed in Wasaga Beach. And so I have a bit of a concern whereby uh, service levels in Springwater Township uh, are, are not at the same level as Wasaga Beach. And so that is something that we will be having a further discussion with that group on. So to make sure that our residents are being looked after. To be continued. Okay, thank you. Um, 
NVCA, I sent around to council the um, summary of the last board meeting. At the last board meeting, uh, the NVCA budget for 220 was passed. Uh, I did not support it, as I previously indicated uh, a motion that I had put forward with respect to it. But 84% by weighted assessment voting did approve the budget. Uh, there was another report on the strategic plan and business plan for that um, is going to be done for the next four years for MVCA. Uh, the staff report um, indicated it is being worked on and would be presented to the board in March. I put forward a motion saying that um, I wanted more board involvement along the way with respect to that. I think for obvious reasons with the environment with respect to conservation authorities these days that we've been talking about. And uh, that did get passed that it would be um, brought up each board meeting for the, uh, between now and finalization of it uh, in the spring of 220. So that's the, the update. And again, you can read further on the um, uh, circular that I distributed today that I received from them. Okay. <coughs> Next, we are moving on to notices of motion. And there is one that was moved by Councillor Ritchie. And before I get a seconder, I'll just remind people, uh, be it resolved that the Director of Public Works and the Superintendent of Municipal Drains bring to Council an assessment of all the municipal drains in Springwater Township along with a brief history and maps of each municipal drain in the Township on or before June 30, 220. Is there a seconder to that? Councillor Cabral. So, um, any further comments before uh, open up for discussion, Councillor Ritchie? Thank you, Mayor Allen. Just to uh, reiterate uh, where I'm coming from with that, uh, when we were doing budget, when we were looking at, there, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons why, of course, the Swaley Drain, we've dealt with that. We'll be dealing with that in the near future in 2020. Uh, the, the train drain, having farmers approach me about it. Um, there's other drains that I've had other farmers approach me about so I, I'm, uh, I'm kind of thinking, you know, I'm in my third term and I've never heard anything about municipal drains other than the Swaley drain back in our second term. So I'm, I'm starting to wonder maybe this would be a good time to get out in front of this, um, see what's going on, um, and, and, and address, address any concerns that might come up from this. And I think it's a good educational tool for all of us. I don't know the whole thing about municipal drains, but uh, I, I'd sure love to know where they are, the maps, and, and what have you, assess this. Um, the only thing I would maybe change that, and, and I take direction from the Director of Public Works, rather than a June 30th, if it, would, if it was any better to move it to an August 30th, that puts you into the dry time. Because I know back in the springtime, I had, I had asked about the train drain. Of course, we had a wet spring. You couldn't get in there. So if it would help at all for an August 30th, and the reason why I'd like it back by then is that we can look at this, and if there's any problems, then we can incorporate that into our next budget and work towards that. Um, and uh, I think this is a worthwhile tool, and I hope everybody supports it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor. I'll just go to um, <coughs> Director Coleman. Uh, any comment with respect to the dates, June 30 versus the end of August? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, yeah, we would certainly appreciate the end of August if I could re respectfully request that maybe we present it at the first meeting in September, uh, since we only have one meeting in August. Uh, that would give us definitely give us the dry season. June thirtieth could be done, but it would be pushing it. So if we could bring it to you the, okay. for the first meeting in September, that We've would be made, great. Made that change, Councillor Cabral. That all right with you, a seconder? Sure. Deputy Mayor Cogla. Um, thank you, Marilyn, and through you to Councilor Ritchie. Just clarification, when you ask for an assessment, it's not asking for an assessment schedule on each of the municipal drains. It's just an update. Councilor Ritchie? Um, I, I'm looking to see what, what the status of each one is. So go out and assess each drain uh, by foot, whatever way they want to do it, and, and bring back they might want to talk to maybe some of the farmers or your outlets backing up what's going on and, and get out in front of this. And, and they have between now and the end of August in order to address these and bring it back. So that's what I mean about assessing them.
Okay, we'll take the vote. All those in favor? That is carried. Any other notices of motion? Okay, moving on to 14.1, items for future consideration. Any of those? Okay, moving on to 15.1 bylaws. Can I have a mover and a seconder to get these? Deputy Mayor Coughlin, Councillor Cabral. <coughs> that the bylaws listed herein be signed and sealed by the Mayor and Clerk. 21998, amend procedure bylaw 21707. Read the Council information package 5000 300. Re Vespra, Vespra Valley Estates Phase 3. 5301 Re 1315076 Ontario Inc. ICES 219 99 Re Elmville Village Phase 1 Gallo 219 100 Road Name Subdivision 219 102 Re Wildland Firefighting Agreement County of Simcoe 219 103 End User Computing Devices and Services Agreement CDW Canada Corp. All those in favor? Carried. And a mover and seconder for the uh, <coughs> confirm and adopt the proceedings. Uh, Councillor Moore, Councillor Chapman. That bylaw 219101 to confirm and adopt the proceedings of council at the regular meeting held December 18, 219 listed herein be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk. All those in favor? <coughs> And before we adjourn, uh, have an uh, adjourning motion, I just want to remind those that are listening, are tuning in, the office will be closed from uh, noon, December the 24th, reopening on January the 2nd. And our next meeting of council is on January the 15th, will be the only meeting in January. So can I have a mover and second to adjourn the meeting, please? Councillor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin that the regular meeting of the Township of Springwater does now adjourn at 8.21 p.m. to meet again regular meeting January 15, 2.26.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers at Min Centre, Minnesing. All those in favour? Carried. I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year in 2.20. Be safe on the roads and have lots of fun with your family and friends. Good health.